you're now in the Air Force, uh, been on active duty for a few years, and you're stationed at the Academy. And while at the Academy, an interesting, well, several interesting <laughs> things happened say. to you there at the Academy. Um, and I guess what I want you to speak about is character, sustained character, um, integrity, and how it will aid you when you need it. How others will come to your aid based upon your work ethics, your, your merit as a person, and others are observing you even when you may not be aware. Please share a story <laughs> of, of such a time in your life, sir. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Interesting you ask about the Air Force Academy. I loved being at the Air Force Academy. I'm headed there, sir. Are you? Yes, sir. Congratulations. Thank you. It's a prestigious assignment in many ways, the responsibilities of 4,000 plus undergraduates in a magnificent community of faculty and uh, athletics and military studies. I loved being there. And while there, I got fired. S excuse me, sir? You got I, fired? I was. Why? Uh, my predecessor and mentor, Chaplain Richardson, tells a story, too, mm. about the joy of being fired. I'll leave that story <laughs> to him. Uh, I was informed after preaching in the cadet chapel on a specific text. I've identified it as the text of the rich young ruler who uh, went to Jesus and said, what must I do? And Jesus said, well, go and sell all that you have. Give to the poor, then come follow me, and you will have riches in heaven. Well, he was one of great possessions, and he was crestfallen at the idea of giving away all he had, and he went away. It says in the text, Jesus loved him. As I preached that text in the cadet chapel, I thought, to share with the cadet population and the significant number of visitors who are always in that facility, that the Air Force will never tempt you. The military will not tempt you with money. The military can tempt us with power. And I believe that that temptation begins early. It can begin at the Air Force Academy, the United States Military Academy, the Naval Academy, Coast Guard Academy, wherever we form our young aspirants to military service. And one of the points I wanted to share was that the kingdom of God is worth more than all the legions of merit with which the military may tempt you. The vice commandant of cadets did not care for that and made arrangements with the chief of chaplains that I be removed from the academy and from the Air Force. Wow. My boss at the time was a person of high performance and high expectations and came into my office on that very day, on Sunday, and to notify me of what decision had been made and the chief of chaplains had been notified. Mm. Shared with my family that this was forthcoming and uh, my bishop, uh, and it was not a sanguine outlook at that time. <laughs> But by Thursday that next week, my supervisor came and said, just wait, let's not fill the moving trucks just yet. Sometime later, the one who called for my firing at the academy mm. lost the roommate from his academy years to suicide. Mm. None of the chaplains would preside at that funeral because it was a suicide. I'll do it. I was honored to do that. I didn't know who it was. It was at that point, the one who called for my ouster came to me and we had a reconciliation. It was years later I came to learn that the supervisor under whom I served, the chaplain supervisor, had gone on my behalf to that vice, wing, vice commandant and said, if you'll be firing Howard, you'll be firing me as well. He never told me that. I learned it from the one with whom he interceded on my behalf. That was leadership that was selfless and strong, 
to put his own career at risk when he was very advanced in his rank. He was a lieutenant colonel and very upwardly mobile. That Roman Catholic chaplain is dear to me to this day for his intercessions, his selfless leadership, his kindness to me. Were it not for that supervisor, I would not have pinned on major. I would have left the Air Force. Uh, but it changed me. It changed my view. It taught me how to lead with that value that we call service before self integrity. Uh, but also, that supervisor required excellence. He did not <laughs> suffer fools readily. But I am deeply grateful to this day, and it's humbling that someone else would intercede for me.